Hello everybody, how are you? It's been eight weeks since uh, since the last, well, roughly eight weeks since I last recorded a video. Um, as you know, it's because I've been working offshore and I went for a week's holiday in Malta. Yeah. To give you a graphic example about how long I've been away for, look, check it out. <laughs> yep, I've been away a while. <laughs> I really need a haircut. Uh, but I can't go for a haircut because yesterday, as I record this, yesterday I took the Alfa Romeo to get some MOT because it ran out the MOT laps while I was away. And the only, the only in case you didn't know, um, you know, you might not be from the UK, the MOT is the once a year check you've got to put your car through and make sure it's safe. And if it lapses, um, the only th place you can drive it to is if you drive it to the garage to do the MOT and that's it. Anything else is illegal, you lose your insurance and everything. So I took it to the MT station, but they can't set it until Friday because it all backlogged. I can't take the car anywhere anyway, legally, because it involves your insurance or whatever. So I've just left it there. So until Friday, and I'm recording this on Wednesday, Wednesday, uh, I can't drive anywhere. So I can't go for a haircut. Anyway, that's completely, that's the whatever. I'm stuck without a car. That sounds familiar, but we're not, this is not what this is about. What this is about, and something else you should know, is I love Tamiya, as you can see. Tamiya. And who else loves Tamiya? Everyone loves Tamiya. If you love Tamiya, just out of interest, if you love Tamiya, put me too or something in the comments. I want to see how many people love Tamiya. So, uh, another question is, what was your first hobby grade RC? My first hobby grade RC was the Tamiya TL01 with the Alfa Romeo 155 Ti V6 Bosch body shell. In other words, one of these. Yes. Not this exact one, obviously. I sold, sold mine years ago. I actually had an Audi shell, uh, shell when I sold it, a silver one. Uh, I think the Alfa shell was destroyed in many a crash. Um, but here we are. I saw this on eBay. It was uh, used, well, I say used. The, the wheels had been put on something that was on display for, you know, just uh, shelf queen purposes only. But it was they were elevated, so there was no weight on the tires. And uh, the body shell had been done uh, in the in the uh, stock uh, box colours, the box paint job. Uh, but uh, the car had not been built. It's still in its bags, still in, you know, brand new in that regard. So it is essentially a brand new TL01 with the rather painstaking job of the shell already being done um, which I thought was great because because you know uh, I would lo there's very few TL ones left that are brand new very very few and they usually go for a lot of money um, this wasn't exactly cheap uh, I got it from the US uh, it came to just over 200 pounds then I had to pay a 49 pound import fee but it's done now and here it is uh, I was a bit disappointed when I opened it and saw the state of the box because you know if I ever do come to sell this car again it, it, it hikes up the value if the box is in good condition and it's not really it's you know it's a bit buckled and stuff I love the fact that it's, uh, it's got the original uh, adverts on it uh, featuring TL01 chassis easy to build maybe great price nope nope not great price nope it also says it has the uh, resistor speed controller with it. That isn't in this. That's the one thing that's missing. Everything else is here, but the resistor speed controller is not here. I don't care. No, I was going to use an ESC anyway. Nobody cares about that. So, let's have a look at it. My disappointment... Bleh, disappointment? My disappointment heightened when I, uh, when I took this uh, out of the box because the body shell has been done, but it's been done very very badly put this out of the way for just now yes the body shell my plan was to build the car up and I'll do some build threads on this I, uh, and, and oh, I say build thread that's for the forum but also I'll do some build videos for you guys um, yeah, so you guys can follow it because everybody likes a vintage Tamiya you know Tamiya nostalgia is a huge thing um, However, I was going to build the car up and then use it indoors occasionally and then keep it as a shelf queen for the rest of the time. But this shell is not good enough for that. Not by a long shot. Actually, you won't see it in the camera. But when I first removed the shell, I actually felt they'd used the wrong paint. They used plastic paint and not polycarbonate paint. The paint job is that bad. But what it looks like to me is not only did they, but it looks like they didn't wash the underneath the shell first before spraying it. They also didn't wash their hands because here, for example, and here, and uh, 
few other places there and all over there there's dirty fingerprints underneath the paint it's it's awful and um i think what they've done is they, they managed to do something really quite interesting quite impressive if you think about it they managed to i mean I, i've said i've now sanded i've sandpapered these surfaces so they're a lot better and i spent some time yesterday tidying this all up tidying the stickers up I mean, so it looks better now than it did but they managed to make it look like they'd used a normal square a normal straight pair of scissors to cut out the round bits and then they also look, made it look like they used the round shell scissors to cut out the straight bits i don't know how they managed that it also looks like they used a hammer to cut out the, the stickers and applied them with his arse because honestly it's it's horrendous um, you won't see it you will not see it uh, on the camera but um, but it's bad it's really really bad and what I did yesterday is um, I took a sharp knife and went over some of the stickers because some of them were overlapping like this silver Bosch one went up over the window and this was peeling out and the lamps were peeling off so I went over them with some glue and uh, cut them out properly, well as much as I could, and glued them back down. And a lot of this will make the this will make the purists and the perfectionists cringe. There was where the stickers weren't fully down. Like for example, if we didn't cut them out accurate enough, there'd be a little lip sticking up. There was dirt and hair stuck under the stickers, so you could see like dirt around them. It was pretty. It's pretty grim. Honestly, if if these shells were still attainable, they're not. But if they were, I would just simply bin this shell and make a new one but that's just not an option so i still don't want to use the chassis outside though because if it ever does come to getting sold again um you know you want it in perfect condition also let's be honest and um, if i want to use a touring car outside my tt01 is massively hopped up and is really good outside so why would i use this anyway Onto the you can see here everything's still in the bags and everything um, this won't be entirely stock for the purists out there I'm sorry it won't be stock but it will be easily reversible it'll be it's very simple to turn it back to box stock for example some of the upgrades I'm using these Ansman shock absorbers um, to replace the friction shocks because the friction shocks are awful of course and these are oil filled with two different springs uh, two different uh, I think the red ones are stiffer but I'm not entirely sure um, what's funny about these, I got these on eBay um, and the advert was for a different colour of shock absorbers, they didn't look anything like that. Same shape and everything with the, with the threaded bodies and everything, but they were they were not the same shocks. But I don't care because the Andrew shocks are perfectly good and they're fine, no problem. And they're right, the right size and they did come with the two different springs which the advert said, so that's cool. I've got an RW Racing Mod 0.6 pinion, 19 tooth. So, the reason I got that is uh, the standard pinion on these things are mod 0 0.6, they're not 48 pitch, just like the TTO one. And the standard uh, aluminium Tamiya ones are really poor, really poor. Plastic spurs wear out the pinion quicker than the pinion wears out the plastic spurs. They're so soft. So, that is, all, that is an upgrade. Um, another thing, now here's the thing. Actually, I'll get onto that in a minute. First I'll do, I've got these. Bearing sets, because obviously being a vintage Tamiya, or being a, I say no, not even vintage, that's what, that's, that's what I don't like about Tamiya is, is they still come with plastic bushings, but this will have bearings, and um, it, what I, I, I picked these ones just because there was lots of bearings, all for the same price, all for the full bearing kits, I mean, all for the same price, but this was what, by a seller called Captain Hobby, <laughs> and I like that, I like it, you know, I'm a sailor, I like that, anyway, right, next. Here's the thing, this is what I was going to talk about. The TEL01 has a reputation of having, of being ill handling and twitchy. I, I don't remember it having ill handling and being twitchy at all. Um, I mean, I was only probably about 10 or 11 or something uh, when my dad built this for me when I was uh, young and I think it was for Christmas, it would have been for Christmas. But I don't remember that. Now there could be several reasons for that. It could be because I was simply too young to appreciate good handling or bad handling. It could be that. Another reason it could be is our street was done, I mean redone and lovely smooth, a few years after. And before that it was a bit, you know, suspect. It was a little bit rough and all the rest of it. So it could be that all the touring cars, not just mine, but there's a few people with different types, Kyoshas, etc. We're all sort of bouncing around a little bit and really it didn't matter whose car handled bad or worse, uh, good or bad, sorry, because um, 
you know, very rarely were all four wheels on the ground. It could have been that. Another thing it could well be is this standard silver can 540 Camio motor. That's what I was using, and they have no power whatsoever. They're super, super, super uh, lame. And, um, you know, as we all know, if you have handling deficiencies, it gets really heightened when you start screwing more power into your car. And uh, I didn't have, I, I just standard motor. I also had the standard um, uh, wiper arm mechanical speed controller for a while, but I did upgrade it to an ESC later on. What I don't know, now this is the thing, I say that the motor was dead slow and, you know, I don't remember the handling being poor. But at one point I did buy a Trinity P2K, which was a, a stock motor, 27 tonne, but a massive hike in power over one of these things. And I can't remember if that went on my Tamiya or on my HVI Sprint, which was my first really quality. It was after this, and it was my first proper decent tuning car. Because let's be honest, TLO1s as standard are not particularly good. I mean, they have potential because you get upgrades and hot pops and stuff. But as standard, they're not that great. Um, and I can't remember if I put the P2K on this or the Sprint, the HVI Sprint. But if I did put the PTK on this, then the whole, oh, maybe it handled okay because it didn't have much power. That argument goes out the window a little bit. So, about the handling, I've got these. These are the, uh, I'll give you the part number, 53345, which are for the TL01 and M03. These are Tamiya parts. And what these are is they give you toe-in on your rear wheels. These are the toe-in rear uprights. Now, in case you're wondering what all this toe-in, toe-out stuff is, I'll show you. So, you get your car. If your wheels are here and they're leaning in or out, that's camber. Negative camber, it's where the top of the wheel leans in. Positive camber, top of the wheel leans out. You only ever use negative, you never use positive. Toe-in and toe-out is, is not this way, but it's that way. You know, so if the wheels are pointing forward or pointing out. And you can run toe out at the front. That makes it very aggressive and very twitchy, but you can. You never run toe out at the back. That's just, it would just pirouette. But this car came standard with zero toe in or out at the back. It was completely straightforward, completely straight. Now you can calm that down a little bit by adding slight toe in at the back. Because toe in slows down the initial reaction into the corner. So if your front's toe in, it makes it a little bit more stable in the front and it's slightly slower to respond, but it's nice and stable. The same with the back. The back end is le less likely to come round if it's slightly towed in. So that's what these uprights do. Um, the other thing, uh, where is it? There it is. Another thing is, this is important, the Core RC LiPo, two cell hard case. Now, several, um, in fact, cut right here and I'll show you. Several different LiPo manufacturers claim to have rounded packs in order to fit in cars and chassis designed for nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride batteries, the old, the old fashioned batteries. Like for example, these Overlanders, you can see here, they're very similar. However, there's a size difference. If you look here, the Core RC one is noticeably smaller. It's in fact four millimeter roughly shorter than this. I think the measurements are 138 and 134, I believe. I'll, if, if that's wrong, I'll put a little thing at the bottom. But um, yeah, I'm sure it's 138 and 134. Very few are 134. 134 is the exact size you want for a car that's designed for nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride because um, the battery runs across the, the width of the chassis and then there's arms that come down to lock the battery in place. And if the four mil too long, they'll try and force them out and they won't fit right. This one wouldn't fit right. This one does. It makes all the difference. See, you can see on this side, that's thick and proud. So this battery, Core RC, is um, the only one. In terms of uh, radio gear, etc., and speed controller, I'm waiting on Alan, Alan from Tay Models. He's getting some stuff in for me. I'm gonna be running a Hobby Wing um, ESC, brushed ESC because they're really good. And I'm going to be, uh, he's getting me in a 2.4 gigahertz radio system, which I'll show you at the time. The last thing I'm waiting for is the motor. Um, because like I say, these are pretty limp wristed. I'm not really into using this. Um, the purists will be angry with me already, but you know, just, you know, to calm down a little bit because the motor I'm replacing is, is, is a, a Tamiya brush motor. So 
I'm going to be using the torque tuned, there goes my phone, thank you very much. I'm going to be using the, the torque tuned Tamiya motor, which is a 25 turn. Um, I could have got a cheaper brush motor, which is even faster, like a 17 turn or something for less than torque tuned. But um, they say that the, the Tamiya stuff are actually assembled or the parts come from, I don't know if it's assembled in, but the parts themselves internally come from Japan and are better quality than the parts that you get from a, a Chinese make, for example. Um, and I wanted to keep it all sort of Tamiya, you know what I mean? It's nice having a Tamiya motor and all those of it. I wasn't going to get a Tamiya shocks because they're massively overpriced. Um, and I wasn't going to get a Tamiya ESC because again, it's massively overpriced compared to the, the what you get there. The Hobby Wing is better for its money, definitely. But I'll be running standard wheels and tires, the slick tires with nice multi scope wheels. And then obviously I'll be building it for you guys. So that's about it really, I'm just, I'm looking forward to cracking on with it. I'm going to rebuild these, probably off camera because no one wants to see someone rebuilding some shops. Just to make sure they're, they're all even, I'll maybe put some uh, TLR oil in it. Uh, maybe 45 or 50 weight because I'll be running this indoors on carpet, hopefully. Now the reason I'll be doing that, I will get into it on another video because, um, yeah, I've got something else to talk about next time about a different touring car. So, stay tuned for that. And stay tuned also for the build videos for this old Tamiya. If you're a friend, if you're a friend, that's the wrong word, a fan. If you're a fan, I've had too much coffee, sorry. If you're a fan of vintage Tamiyas or touring cars or you like Tamiyas themselves or anything like that, or you're just interested in build videos, tune in next time and that's what we'll be cracking on with. Right, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry it was all ickledy fickledy, but that's just how it is or out of practice. And uh, take care and we'll catch you soon. Cheers. When I used to own this car, I remember it being very loud. It was a screamy car. She was a screamer. You could, uh, I had, there was, like I said, there were some people in the street. Some of them had HPIs. There was a few Sprint. Somebody had a, a Kyosho. Basically, the Kyosho, the equivalent of this, the, the budget bottom range Kyosho. And this was the loudest car. Um, it wasn't very efficient. Now, as I'm building this, I'll be using the you know good quality grease and everything and all that stuff. But also, I'm wondering if the noise I was hearing, and I associated it with you know high friction, not very not very well made or whatever, was simply because that old pinion was on its way out. I was using the bushes, not bearings, but standard bushes that won't help. But also the 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 pinion. Uh, standard pinion which was never replaced okay it was only using the silver can motor for at least most of it it could have been all of it but it was at least most of it um yeah was that standard tamiya aluminium pinion just completely because they, they the, the the teeth start like this but then they go like sort of shark fins they get worn out in one direction and it doesn't take very long if you've got you know if you're using it a lot uh, it doesn't take very long for those to wear out. I found out in my TTO one it started to make a racket, uh, but not as not as bad as this. I must say, not as bad as this. I assumed this was because of the, you know, quite crude gears and all the rest of it. I assumed. I'm not saying it does, but I assumed it had quite crude gear, gears, quite crude running system. It did have the bushings, which is crude itself, and obviously this pinion. I'm interested to see how smooth. You know when you get the, the whistling noise, the the lovely whistling noise you get of a newly built, nicely freed up tuning car. I wonder how close this will be. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I'm still waiting on that, that motor. Uh, I actually, it's due now, so I'm wondering where this motor is. Another thing I forgot to mention is I'm going to give it adjustable camera. Again, I've ordered the links and they're due now, but they haven't arrived yet. And these are the Tamiya links to give it adjustable front and rear camber and front toe as well. So not that I'm going to be messing around too much with it, but I'll probably give it one degree or one and a half degree camber all round and maybe slight tone at the front and uh, see where we're at from there. But anyway, yeah, I just wanted to mention that to you guys as well because it was something I was supposed to talk about but I forgot. Anyway, thank you very much for watching again. Uh, yeah, catch you soon. Take care.